Hi, and you're very welcome back to the fifth episode of the Women's National League show here on FinalWhistle.ie. My name is Brefney Early, and as ever, I'm joined by Stephanie Roach of P Match United for my co-host. Stephanie, it's been an interesting week. We're up and running. There's been football. We can talk about actual games. How's your week been? Yeah, look, delighted to come away from Wexford with three points. Uh, really happy with how all the games went. Seemed to be quite entertaining, good goals. The live stream's up and running. I think it's it's a great start to the league and hopefully long may it continue. I think, as I said, it's good to see good quality games. I think our game against Wexford was probably the most anticipated one and it was probably the one that lacked a bit of quality just by the weather being so bad. And obviously it's always going to be a tough game between the two of us. Um, but as I said, just happy we got away with the, with the win. But delighted with how... The season has started not just for ourselves but also with the, the goals and the quality that was on show in the league yes 17 goals scored around the four games in the league which it's pretty high i was quite impressed uh, with some of the quality shown over the weekend as well but the beautiful thing about the whole league this year is that we get to watch every single game and if you can't catch it live you can watch it back have you had a chance to dip your toe into the loi tv platform at all yet steph yeah, I've watched pretty much every game back. I watched the highlights of some of the games and um, watched a bit of our own game back. So it's it's just a great tool for us to have, even just as a player, to be able to look back on your own performance as well. Like we do a lot of analysis at, at PMA on ourselves. But again, it's just nice to have that option to be able to go back and, and, as you say, watch the other teams who are playing as well. Because we've mentioned this so many times, I think this season is going to be very competitive. So to be able to watch the games that are on playing when you're playing, maybe, or obviously go back and watch the highlights when you get the opportunity, it's it's a great tool to have. Yeah, there was a couple of things that I was really impressed with. First of all, let's get the negative out of the way. There was a couple of issues. Uh, the Treaty Bowes or the Bowes Treaty game on Saturday afternoon was, was barely watchable. Um, it was cutting out every maybe 15, 20 seconds. And it was, it, in parts, it was just an absolute nightmare. But if I didn't have to cover it for work and for the website I, and this podcast, I wouldn't have stuck with it. It was, it was very poor. That being said, I thought the rest of the, the platform across the whole weekend, men's and women's, was really, really good. It's a step up from what we've had. A couple of questionable choices in the commentary choices, maybe, um, but uh, there was a there was one or two that were just a struggle to watch or to listen to. But um, when I had five or six of them on at the same time, all muted, just listening to one, it was really, really good. I watched bits of all the games, but there's a really cool feature where you can put it at double speed. I don't know if you actually looked at that. No, I didn't see that. You can put it on double speed and actually fly through the game in 45 minutes, which is a really, really cool feature, and that's part of the setting. So, no, I'm I'm very happy. I think it's a really, really good start. Um, a couple of improvements, but I think they will get better and it will improve as the as the season goes on. And I'm really looking forward to following all of the teams throughout the league campaign. And um, that's enough about me waxing about uh, LOI TV. In terms of the actual games, uh, we might start with your own game, seeing as that was where you were. You've talked about it already, but in terms of uh, the Wexford game, conditions, how big of an impact did they have on the game? A big, big impact, I think. I think both teams would agree on that. I think it, it was quite windy. Obviously, Calvin Tilly and Wexford, the men's teams, played the night before, so the pitch was a little bit caught up. And Look, I think every time we play Wexford, it's always a physical battle. It's always going to be really... We always say like we're going to war nearly, you know, like on the way, so it's always going to be... A difficult tough game and and i think i, I spoke on rt radio yesterday about it and i think it really we were quite lucky to come away with the win i think a draw might have been a fair result obviously i'm delighted we got the win we had a little bit of luck with us on the day and obviously a great finish from ellie to to nick it late on but i think overall they missed the penalty and you've got a touch on it i think she said she got a touch on it anyway it hit the post so we had the luck with us on the day but i do think maybe overall a draw might have been a fair result but as i said delighted to get the win yeah, you'll take it when it goes your way. Um, of course, you mentioned the missed penalty. Wexford will be disappointed. It's a big reverse from last season because you would have started early in last season with a 3-0 defeat down in Wexford. So it must be nice to kind of reverse that result. Exactly, yeah. And that stings. I think going down there, we knew that. We had that in our minds. We've had, as I said, in the past quite a few battles, even from as long back when I played there, there's still some players like Savadell Kennedy and... And a few others. Um, it was. It's always going to be a battle, as I said. And I'm just happy, as I said, that we got the win. And it's three points on the board for the start of the season. We have shells in the next game. It's a little bit annoying that there's a gap between now before the next games with the international break because you'd like to continue that momentum. But yeah, delighted to get the win and, and looking forward to the next game now. Let's move on. Let's go back in chronological order, I suppose. If we look at the first game, uh, kicked the whole proceedings off on 
um, Saturday afternoon, two o'clock, was Bose and Treaty up in the Oscar Trainer Center on the Oscar Trainer Road. Um, goals, what more can you want? Eight goals in a game, some fantastic finishes, some nice passages of play, some dubious enough defending, but uh, overall, a really entertaining game. And you said Bose were going to struggle to score this year. Um, no, six I don't goals. think I said Bose. I said DLR, I think, was my point that I didn't know where goals were going to come. Nothing. <laughs> I think you might have said something similar-ish well, about both. Well, I think it was Neve. We had Neve on, obviously, and yeah, I think she yeah. said that they'd competed last year and now it's about going forward and getting the goals. And to be fair to them, they they really shown. Obviously, as you said, there were a couple of dubious uh, mistakes maybe at the back from Trini, particularly with the first goal. And I think Brona Ken getting the two goals early on set them on the right the right track to go and win the game. But, yeah, I think... Oh, don't be blaming me on saying that the Nordic goals are going to come from. I think that was a, a general chat between ourselves and Neve in terms of how they were last season to, to where they want to go. I, I, I apologize. I apologize. <laughs> Stitching me up. <laughs> but they did. They came out of the blocks and the game was really over at 2 0. And I think maybe last season, Treaty might have folded, but they came back in. They did compete fairly well. Um, they did manage to get two of their own goals, Shannon Parpat. And Aoife Horgan did get on the score sheet um, to kind of set it up. But I think Bowes just in the end were just too strong for them. Yeah, and look, I think I, I talked quite a bit about styles of play and how teams are playing football. And I think Treaty are one of those teams who are looking to play the right way, but sometimes they're a little bit naive and they got caught out. And we've seen that with their first goal yesterday. And again, it's great to see them trying to play that football, but I think there may be times this season where they're going to need to try and play it kind of a little bit more game management, knowing when to play and when not to play. And that will come with, with more games and I suppose the players being more comfortable on the ball. But I think, look, they were caught out a few times uh, in the game against Bowes and I think they'll learn from that. But I think, as I said, it's it's all about learning how to play that style of play. And I think when you're, you're looking to play out from the back, you want to get the ball down and playing, it can be risky at times. So hopefully they'll be able to get their feet a little bit better uh, as the season goes on. But again, Look, a very good game, loads of goals and, and entertainment for people to watch. It did improve as the, as the game went on and, and Treaty did continue to pass it out from the back the whole way through the game. Um, and it, it got better. There was one or two little mistakes at the start, but would you not prefer to see, I definitely as a, as a coach would prefer to see teams trying to play that way all the time, almost forget about what's on the score sheet, just play the game the way it should be played. And I know there was a lot of talk over the weekend with, the defeat to Luxembourg. We're not going to get into that here, but about how the game should be played and whether it's the result versus the performance. What's your own situation on that? If you're a coach of Treaty, are you saying you got to get the performance? It's all about it's all about the, the the score at the end of the game, or are you trying to build something in terms of a culture of how the team plays? Yeah, look, I think it's the same as as you touched on Ireland against Luxembourg. Stephen Kenny's trying to bring in a new system of play, and he's a lot of work to do with that, but. I think when the results don't come, that's probably when Treaty, the players themselves, will look at themselves and go, is it working? Will they lose faith in what the manager's trying to get them to do? So it's about, yes, trying to... I think every team in the world really is trying to progress and play that kind of play out from the back. Keepers now have to be good on the ball. It's not just about being able to save things. It's about being on the ball and being able to play and start attacks nearly from the defence. So I agree. Well, what they're doing is, is a great thing to see. I think Cork are similar. They've got generally got really bit much better at it over the last couple of seasons but I think there has to be a point in games where maybe you're thinking all right get the ball to pitch let us get get settled and then I'm not saying take it out of the game altogether but different games call for different styles of tactics and you don't want to take anything out from the players but I think if they continue to leak goals the way they did against Bowes you might get the players kind of second guessing themselves and, and that's kind of hard to get confidence playing out from the back when maybe you're going to lose goals you know that kind of way so that's that's the only way I'd worry about it. but again more games coming, I think will give them the more a bit more confidence on the ball and, and their players will get used to doing what they've been trying to do. Absolutely, and I suppose it's important to balance the two. Um, speaking of goalkeepers being comfortable on the ball and, and showing off their, their skills, um, we saw some interesting footwork from the Cork goalkeeper in their clash name in DC Park with uh, Galway Women's FC. I suppose the main talking point, first half hat-trick for uh, Mayo GA star, or former Mayo GA star, I don't know whether it's former or not, we're going to talk about that a lot in the show today. Um, Rachel Kearns, who came back into the squad, scored a first half hat-trick, set them up, but Cork uh, never really read the script from that point of view, and despite a missed penalty for Galway, um, did come back, and a Becky Casson a screamer from long distance uh, sealed a, a draw for both sides. 
do you think that's a, a win lost by by uh, or not win, but a three, two points lost by um, by Galway? They they got to be disappointed with being two 0 up so early in the game and then to to not close it out. Yeah, I think it's it's a mixture of both, isn't it? I think you got to give credit to Cork. They didn't give up. I think Abby McCarthy was very, very good in the game. There was a double save she made in around the 60th minute. And then obviously that led to, to gave them the opportunity to go and get the equaliser through that goal from Becky Castle, which was a great strike. But I think overall, a few of their the way they played, we spoke about playing out from the back. They had one passage of play that was absolutely excellent. They came to a shot that was saved by the Galway keeper. And Look, I think Cork kept going. They kept believing they were going to get a result. And I think, as you say, Galway will be disappointed having been up and, and winning the game to, to, to have lost, dropped two points. But again, I think credit must go to Cork for the way that they asserted themselves and got going again after a bad start. Yeah, no, they, they, that passage of play, we actually shared on our Twitter account over the weekend because it didn't make the highlights package. There was that much action going on in MDC Park. It didn't make the highlights package on LOI TV. But um, it was just a, a phase of play where uh, a through ball from Galway, a long ball from Galway, uh, was cut out really well by Danielle Burke. She got the ball back to her keeper, who literally just nonchalantly just took around Rachel Kern. Like. <laughs> and then just to the centre half, played out to Zara Foley. Zara Foley then just clips it back and leaves the the uh, Galway player attack, clips it into Lauren, um, who skips by a player and, and hits the top corner, only for the Maja in the... In this, I've got the Slovenian goal. The Slovenian goalkeeper <laughs> goal, uh, gets up and tips it over the bar. But it was lovely to see just individually cl- and collectively that team um, just really working for each other. And I think it's the work rate that got them back into that. That maybe in part Galway just seemed to be missing. Uh, now I didn't see all the game. I watched it in bits and pieces. But Cork just seemed to want it more. And I think that's probably where it came down at the end. Yeah, and again, it's it, going back. I don't want to keep going back to this, this style of play, but it's about believing in what you're working on. It's about believing in the project that the manager is trying to get them to, to get the place he's trying to get them to get to. And I think they're the prime example of a team, as I mentioned, who have come on in recent years. They obviously got to the cup final last year. and um, The final probably didn't go the way they wanted to, but they've they've stuck with it this year, having lost players. And, and I think, as you say, it's their attitude. It's their work rate for one another. And Again, they're believing in the project the manager is putting forward to them. They're they're trying to play the right style of football. And I think it worked out for them yesterday. And they'd be disappointed to have gone down goals early, but to come back and show that resilience was was great to see. And and again, look, I think Galway, we spoke about them obviously last week on the show, I think with Chloe on and um, very, very good team. They've brought in some new players as well, kind of a new a new team gelling together. So so they'll probably be happy enough to get off to to a start where they didn't lose as well, but also a little bit disappointed. But I think Overall, a fair result. And as I said, the two teams going forward, I think, could be very good within the league. It looks to be very competitive at the uh, for the top goal scorer award this year. There's plenty of people already put their hand up in the air. Bruno Kane, we mentioned, too, for Bohemians. Her replacement on the day, uh, I think it's Aoife, Aoife Robinson, I think, um, she got two as well. Uh, Rachel Kearns went one better. Hat-trick in the first half. Um, she brings a huge experience. Obviously, she's played in the league before. She's underage international but she brings a huge experience in from other sports as well. We're going to be talking to two more, Saoirse and, and Murren later in the show. But Rachel, um, have you seen much of her? Are you aware of her from, from of old? Because she would have come, kind of broken through when you were maybe not in the league yourself. Um, what's your thoughts on her performance over the weekend? Yeah, look, obviously for any striker to score a hat-trick, you'd be happy enough, will not you? Especially in the first game of the league and to get off to such a good start. Um, I wouldn't really know Rachel personally. Obviously, I would have seen her from the outside looking in more so. But look, she'll be she'll be delighted. Obviously, I think she spoke. I, I read her her quotes on the LOI women's that she basically was delighted to score the hat-trick, but disappointed not to lose. And in fairness to her, she gave core credit as well for, for how they came back into the game. But look, any striker, any forward uh, in the league is looking to, to score goals. And she set the bar high, as you mentioned. And um, myself and a few other girls at Pima will be chasing her down now. Hopefully we can be able to, to compete come the end of the season. <laughs> Yeah, she did a uh, bullet header from a corner early on in the game. And then the third has been all over social media as well as Becky Casson strike. And um, she just took it down nicely and, and kind of tucked it away with the right foot from the edge of the box. So um, some, yeah, there's some really, really nice features of the LOI TV platform. She's been able to share that kind of content so quickly uh, and really things to go viral. I suppose you've seen the, the benefit of that on a personal and team basis years ago. I'm not going to mention it again, I promise. <laughs> well, uh, I'm <laughs> No. So, something happened a few years ago. I don't know, <laughs> but it, it just it 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 shows what can be done with the league, and I think it really 
I think this weekend more than anything I've seen in the last maybe 15 years involved in women's football in the country, it's it's really pushed it up a notch in terms of the visibility. And I think it's a really, really positive step. We've one game we haven't talked about yet. Um, that's at Lone and Shells. We're going to actually talk to two people from, who played in that fixture, one from each side. Saoirse Noonan will be with us in a little while, as well as Myrne Devaney from the Athlone, who made her debut on, or made her debut, uh, on, on Saturday afternoon. I suppose it's two, two very similar characters at different stages, maybe, of their development. Uh, the game itself, a really good tussle, two really good, solid teams. Um, Shells played probably the nicer football, but Athlone definitely were there. And, and we've touched on that before, I think, on the show in terms of the competitiveness that they've brought to their side this year. Um, your thoughts on that game? Did you get a chance to watch back Shells? Two goals, uh, middle of the second half, um, a really good finish from Pearl Slattery, and then a penalty, questionable penalty maybe, but a penalty from Alex Kavanagh to wrap up all three points for Shells. Yeah, I, I watched back the highlights and a, a couple of like, a little phases of play I went back through. And look, I think uh, Shells obviously got the win. That's the most important thing for them. I think they want to be going to compete for the league. But I think at loan, we've talked about them quite a bit, particularly the kind of the, the newer teams who have come into the leagues and, and how they're going to be a little bit more competitive. And we've seen that on Saturday. I think they they shown that they weren't going to go into a game fearing, fearing Shells. They probably believe maybe that they... They have a little bit more quality at times and they're probably going to have a lot more of the ball, but they got themselves in and around the Shells players. It didn't give them time to settle and they made it really difficult. I think the, the weather conditions obviously played into it a little bit, but I think, obviously, I, I think they'd be disappointed to lose the game, but a good start from them against a very good Shell side and, and I think they've shown that they are going to be competitive and I think, I can't remember who it was, I think it was Pearl actually who said after the game, it was again on the LOI Women's, they had a bit of a quote and she said that, she that thinks that Athlone will take points from teams this year and I think she's dead right I hope I'm getting the right person there I'm pretty sure it was her who said it but I think Athlone as I said are, are going to be more competitive this year and as I said they'll, they'll be happy enough with the performance maybe not too happy with losing the game but it wasn't too much of a I wouldn't be too disappointed with, with losing to a quality side like Shots yeah, no, and I think, as you said, at loan, we'll take points off teams. Uh, they really impressed me. They've got some really good players. Um, Ryan Devaney, we're going to hear from shortly, but Kayla Brady, who was on the show two weeks ago, and her sister Leah, uh, Abigail Ronan, a couple of hairy moments maybe at the start in goals, um, but looks solid enough. Um, but just the work rate again and the effort that went in was just um, above a level above where they've been in the past. Um, so really, really good to see the teams progress. And I think we're seeing that with the likes of Cork, Bowes, um, Athlone, the standard is rising at the bottom of the league as well as at the top. And I think that's only uh, going to strengthen the league. We might get on to um, some of our interviews. Uh, maybe we might have a chat with, uh, obviously, uh, GA star turned soccer star. Dual star, whatever you want to call her. Uh, she's excelled on both fronts for both Cork and Cork City over the last number of years. And she's decided to focus her attentions now on the, the beautiful game and to play soccer with Shells. A fairly high profile transfer over the winter. And she joined Shells and she's going to join us now to talk about that. Saoirse, you're very, very welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much for having me. It's been an interesting couple of months for you. You've been everywhere. You've been all over the, the news in terms of the, the biggest profile move, I suppose, within the league over the last couple of weeks and months. Um, what's the, the last few months been like for you as you've acclimatised to a new club? Yeah, um, I suppose it's been quite hectic. Um, it's been a big change for me. Um, Training-wise, it's been fairly similar. I'm still training the same amount. Um, I suppose just focusing more more so on soccer and what I need to improve on in, in those aspects. Um, but it's been going great so far and I've enjoyed every minute of it, so looking forward to now. Um, got the first game, obviously, last weekend, so ready for the league now. You touched on it there, just focusing on football this season. Sorry, I take them off to say soccer, so I'm just going to say football. Um, you obviously have taken a little bit of a break from GAA. How are you finding that? Was it a tough decision for you to make? Obviously, we have a couple of players at PMA last season who were juggling both and it's a huge commitment so was that a big decision for you to make yeah it was I think um I said it plenty of times before I could have stayed with Cork City and I was happy there and I could have stayed playing GA um but I think really if you want to if you want to push to the next level now I think I needed to focus focus on soccer um so yeah it was a really tough decision you see how how um much publicity and everything the GA get which is huge and um, how how exciting the matches are and what it, what a joy it is to be involved in it. Um, but I suppose one thing that I had um, on my side is that they're not back training as a team yet. So 
not seeing them in training, I suppose, and knowing that they're just at home doing Zoom calls um, was a bit easier probably to take than seeing them every week in training together. So in that aspect, in my view, it was probably a little easier, but definitely not for the girls, unfortunately. Yeah, how did that go down? It must have gone down like a lead balloon when you kind of, or how did you break it to them? Was it a kind of a phone call to the manager or, or how do you do it? Because you can't sit down and have a conversation like you would have done for a, quite a sensitive decision like that uh, maybe in previous years. Yeah, um, I kind of spoke to a few of the girls last year um, when I got kind of um, named in the squad for the Germany, the Germany game. And then they were kind of saying, are you going to stay playing GA? What are you going to do? And I said, I'm going to stay for now. Like I was enjoying it. And we were we were doing well. Um, and then I think when I got that call, I kind of knew that that was, that was my dream and my goal. And I really wanted to try push on. Um, and yeah, so I rang Ify just to tell him that, that that was my aim at the moment. And he he understood and he he was really good about it. He said, look, the door is always open. You're welcome back. And all the girls are the same. And they know the commitment that both sports um, that you need to have to achieve. So. Um, yeah, they understand, and hopefully someday I'll be back playing with them. Um, who knows? Why Shelburne, though? There was maybe six or seven other options. You could have stayed with Cork and done that kind of that level. What was the attraction to to bring you to Shells? Was it the arrival of Noel King or maybe a couple of other players coming in, or, or what was the difference? Yeah, um, I suppose, as you said, I could have stayed with Cork, but I knew that I wanted to test myself. Um, so it wasn't as if go up to Shelburne um to to win something or anything because if you look at it cork city were in we were in the cup final last year shells weren't there it was p mount so p mount winning the league and stuff so yeah look it wasn't it wasn't to do that it was just i suppose get myself out of my comfort zone um and try something new um hopefully move up to dublin this summer um and never lived out of home so all these little things i suppose played a factor and then obviously getting a phone call off noel king um he's well known and well established himself so and um, that was another kind of, I suppose, tick on the list that something to try out. So, yeah, it was just it was more so just to try something new and I suppose um, get new experiences and new memories. How was the first game against Athlone? You certainly picked a lovely day for it. Yeah, um, probably didn't go to, to as planned or how well we would have liked it um, or definitely for myself anyway. Um, watching back and I don't think we were I don't like after the game, I suppose I kind of was like, God, it was wasn't the, the debut that you'd want, but um conditions played a big role in that and um it was it was tough. At loan we're we're well up for it in that loan. I think they're gonna definitely cause a few upsets in the league this year. Um and as I said, conditions were crazy and it was very hard to get the ball down and just play. Um like any team would want to play on the first game of the league, just relax the nerves and it was took us till about the sixty minute to get any to get any bit of football and link up play going. So that was a bit of a tough one. Then you're getting frustrated at yourself. Um and with your players, it's hard, but um, we're glad, we're glad the first one's done now and on to the next one. Yeah, we were similar ourselves down at Wexford, the wind, the weather, everything kind of just played into it not being able to be a good quality football match. And um, We play at loan in pre-season as well, and, and I've spoke before about them on the podcast here. And I do see them, as you say, causing a few upsets. And I think for us and for yourselves, it was all about getting points on the board as well. So I'm sure he's just happy to to get the win and obviously Pearl's try kind of put a little bit of glitter on it as well. It was a great goal as well. Yeah, I think, um, as you said, going to the first game of the league, that's all everyone wants. Um, and no matter who scores the goal or what the goal is like, you'll take it. Um, and free Eleanor Ryan Doyle scoring an 89 um, minute winner, like that's that's something that you, you love to see. And I suppose, again, you look at Cork City and Galway 3-3, like it just, the first week I think has been, hectic for everyone it's been everyone's looking at different streams and it's great that we can get to watch them as well um but yeah just getting the three points now and settling the nerves was was definitely what we needed who's impressed you so far this year uh, have you got a chance to look back at any of the games yet Sushi? um yeah i watched i watched my own game there now and a bit of cork city and a bit of the wexford and um peas game yesterday so got a quick look at a bit of everyone um and watched the first half of the treaty game before before we met up on saturday as well so Got a bit of look of everyone. I suppose, were you surprised by the level of coverage that you got when you transferred up? Because it did, it hit like mainstream sports news, not just the usual targets for women's sport. Um, it just seemed to be everywhere for a couple of days. Did that take you by surprise a little bit within the, because the women's league, other than maybe Steph's strike six, seven years ago, it hasn't really gathered that kind of attention on a, on a mainstream sport basis. 
Yeah, um, I think I a small bit expected a small bit of kind of shockwaves, um, especially being from Cork and going to another women's national league club. Um, there is players that I suppose do it a good bit up in Dublin, but you don't see it so much down here because we're kind of um, the only really people near us are a treaty, which is an hour and a half down the road. So there's not too much um, moving clubs. So I did kind of expect a little, not so much as what happened, I don't think. Um, that was a bit of a shock, but I kind of just had to push it to the side because even for myself, I knew it was going to be um, a big move and something that I kind of have to deal with myself and um, learn to learn new ways and stuff moving up. So, yeah, I was a bit shocked with with um, all the press and everyone kind of asking questions um, and then obviously bringing the GA back into it as well. I knew that would kind of draw some people's attention and put question marks like that. So, yeah, look... Um, that's, I suppose, the joys of football and um, I suppose now the next step is just to try it on to the Irish team and to keep progressing with Shell, of course, and to stay in the starting eleven. You touched on it there, just as your last kind of mention with trying to get into the Irish team and you've made the move from Cork to Shells. Do you see possibly your professional career going forward? Do you think maybe you would go away, go to England or, or elsewhere in the next couple of years or, or do you feel that you might want to go back to GAA as well yeah. as balance the both, I mean? Yeah, um, like kind of after a cup final, I suppose, I kind of um, sat down with, with my family and with George, my agent, and kind of said like that I wanted to kind of progress now and I want to make that next step and try try get into Vera's squad. Um, like that's any girl's dream um, and there's, there's thousands that want to do it. So I kind of just said to myself, look, I want to try something new. And I suppose I was kind of looking at, can I go abroad and can I... Um, go somewhere else and try to play with a new team and obviously with coronavirus and stuff that's why I ended up going to Shelburne um so again it wasn't it wasn't kind of in my wish list to to move to another women's national league team but that's the way it happened and I had my mindset that I was going to move um and then obviously went to Shells but yeah I do hope definitely down the line that I can try move on again to um to over to England or something and progress over there and learn more again and um as I said move into a different environment um, and yeah it would be great to come back and play GA like I only see that rising as well and you see the publicity and stuff it's it's huge so it would be nice to get back in there as well. There were whispers of Aston Villa I saw mentioned at least it was one of a couple of British clubs that came up uh, was there actual conversations with with international clubs that maybe were possibilities when you were making that decision? Yeah um, I myself didn't have conversations but George um I only had a conversation with a team in Iceland that I was nearly set set to go over to for three months um and I just it, I just wasn't feeling it I just didn't feel it was the right time with everything going on um and I just wasn't too happy so I said I wouldn't go um and then I was hoping that to go over to, to England to go try with a few teams but again coronavirus just wasn't leaving that happen um it was two weeks quarantine and stuff so it would just be crazy um uh, but yeah hopefully down the line um, when things open up again in the next couple of months, um, can go experience those things and see what happens. Yeah, I think it's it's for the benefit of the Women's National League that you've decided to stay as well. Obviously, we're hoping to keep as many of our better players here, but I do see a bright future for you abroad. So hopefully you can get more opportunities. I think coronavirus has kind of stopped a lot of stuff that's been going on. But uh, I just noticed on your Instagram, you've got your own clothing brand up and running. Freedom, it's called, is it? Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I suppose having a bit more time last year when everything went um, cut shut down, I suppose, and we weren't playing football and we was training by ourselves, I had a lot more free time than I usually have. Um, so I was just doing my bit of college during the day and then um, my own training sessions and then I had my evenings to myself. So I suppose I kind of always um, thought about having my own little company and stuff. And in English, my name means freedom. So I just said, why not go try, explore and see see what happens and um, I kind of got a few a few jumpers and tees and um, checked the quality and stuff and then brought them to life two weeks ago, um, did a little pre-sale and then going to launch the website now on the 12th of April. So it's all go. Um, and it's something to do, I suppose, away away from the football pitch to take your mind off all all the games and sessions and just to, to, to focus out, I suppose, and um, put your brain and your mind elsewhere. Yeah, brilliant. And I've seen the, the the jumpers, I've seen a bit of the thing on your social media. So anybody who's listening, maybe check them out and get a look at it. I think best of luck with that. It's not something that's easy to do to jump into and, and obviously start your own business. So best of luck with that. Hopefully that can go well for you as well. 
Exactly. Am I right in saying there's also a coaching side to your business of what you're doing as well? Have I seen that on social media too? You seem like a pretty busy person. <laughs> a lot <Yeah>. going on. <laughs> um, yeah, last year, I think, um, again, the lockdown just kind of, um, I suppose I was cracking up just training by myself. And I was thinking of the younger girls that wouldn't know how to train by themselves and, and such. And obviously our parents can only do so much for us. Um, so I kind of just started um, reaching out to kids that I know and helping them out. And it kind of, it blew up after a week or two and I had 40, 50 kids um, doing one-on-twos, one-on-ones, um, small little groups of fours. Um, and I just did that for um, for the summer last year because obviously they're, they're used to going to summer camps and stuff. So I did one or two days where I'd had a little camp and stuff and brought them in for an hour and stuff. So it was enjoyable for me. It was keeping me outdoors and keeping me occupied as well. And um i was learning from them as much as they were learning from me as well and it was really enjoyable so that was something that i enjoyed and will you get be able to do that while you're commuting because you're commuting right now we haven't touched on that we spoke about it a bit before we st- uh, st- press the record button but you're commuting from cork up like that must be unbelievable toll just in time in terms of going up once or twice a week yeah um at the moment i'm not doing the coaching um obviously because it's just i'm too busy um but I'm lucky that my mom, my mom leaves me to take the car each week, um, nearly three days a week. So it is, it is tiring and it can be taxing. But when you're enjoying something and when you love it that much, um, there's nothing that will stop you from doing what you want to do. Um, hopefully, I will move up in the summer, um, because obviously, driving up and down three times a week and trying to trying to progress your football isn't isn't the most ideal situation. But um, I'm enjoying it and I'm happy to do it and I'll do it if I have to. Thanks very much for joining us today. I think it's been great to chat to you, great to kind of get an insight into kind of the reality of life as a prospective professional player within the league. I think it's a, it's an interesting journey and an interesting one to follow over the next couple of months and years ahead. Saoirse, congratulations on a great opening day victory, uh, despite leaving it relatively late against that loan. <laughs> it bag all three points and uh, we'll chat to you again, uh, I'm, I'm sure at some stage on the show later on in the year. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thanks, guys. Talk to you soon. Thank you. Saoirse Noonan there of Shelburne, which feels kind of weird when you say it like that. Steph, what's it like from your point of view as a player in the league to look at players like that congregating into into that Shells team? And does it put any bit of fear in you at all about what might lie ahead for you when you meet them later in the year? Yeah, look, it's there's no denying Saoirse's ability. She's she's been a very good player within the league for the last number of years. Um, I think she's a big loss to, to Cork. We've touched on that obviously over the last couple of weeks, but a huge bonus to Shells to have her going forward. And I think, look, she's she spoke quite honestly there. She's looking to try and progress at football and get into the national team. And I think she's done the right thing for herself. Sometimes it can be difficult to do that. I think um, going to Shells, she'll get more opportunities to score goals and really show what she's about, I think. So I think it's it's a positive move for her. And obviously for Shells, it's, it's a great signing. Absolutely. Well, I think one other new signing that featured in that game, we've already mentioned her on the show that we're going to be chatting to her, uh, was Marin Devaney. She, of course, moved from Sligo Rovers under 17s up to the senior grade with Athlone. Uh, we caught up with her earlier in the day to have a chat about how that move has worked out for her. Marin Devaney, you're very welcome to the programme. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. Thank you. How was it making a, your senior debut? I know you've been involved in international squads and, and with underage National League sides with, with Sligo, but to actually get a, a start in your first game in the first day of the league with your new club at Lone Town, how, was the, how did it feel? Yeah, it was really good. Look at um, We had challenge matches as well against other teams, but, you know, it's great to get a start in the, in the league and, you know, that's what you train for and you you work towards so it was really good and the excitement of building their training during the week and it was just try work hard and get your place in the starting 11 so I was happy to do that. He's obviously got off to to not a great start losing the game but it was a good game from all accounts I think he's put it up to shells quite a lot have have you kind of changed your, your style of play this year is there a more kind of belief within the squad that you can go and get results or what do you think has changed since last season I know you weren't there last season but just from from being around the girls. Yeah, definitely. I think um, like we're we're going to try, uh, finish in a good place at the table. Hopefully, look, we know we're probably not to the to the standard just yet of the likes of P Mount and Shelburne. So we're not trying to aim or punch above our weight. We're trying to place place well in the table, and uh, we knew Shelburne were going to be a good football inside. So we thought if we brought a bit of physicality, that they mightn't like that side of the game. 
thought maybe the weather mightn't suit them, that they were probably going to be a more footballing team than we would have been. But we were really happy in at half time. We had the wind as well, missed a few chances. So by all accounts at half time came, we were very happy with how it was going. Then just in the second half, I suppose, Perl Slattery got a goal there. And, you know, if you can score those type of goals on a day like that, you really deserve them. It was a cracking shot. And then we got a penalty as well. I don't know. I don't know if I'd say they, they deserved the penalty. Maybe they said they would, but look, they got it on the day and that was the 2-0 the result. So. It's funny. I actually watched the game back. I watched a bit of it live on, on Saturday afternoon, but I watched it back for the penalty. And I don't know if Abby catches her in that, I think she went down very easily. There might have been a minuscule amount of contact, but I'm not so sure that the referee got it right that time. Probably didn't make a whole pile of difference to the results on the on the night because uh, they were already 1-0 up with only 10 or 15 minutes on the clock. In terms of the actual game, how did you f- find the physicality of it? Because I'd say I didn't see a, a free kick count, but you gave away a couple of frees. You were fairly physical there in, in the in the break, but I mean, you're, you're liking to, to get involved. You weren't scared as a debutante. Oh, no, definitely not. I suppose like you have to go out and lay, lay down a marker and, you know, if you put in a good tackle to start it off, you know, maybe they will get the next touch wrong or something. And look, I think maybe a few tackles were a bit, a bit too right there. But um, I think in the end, then when they got to their penalty stage, they kind of knew that the ref was seeing us as a physical side. So I think she decided she'd chance her luck and see if she could get a penalty out of it. But look, that's how, how the game goes. And I suppose it would have been nice to finish if it was going to be a loss, 1-0 rather than 2-0, but their first goal was a great goal, so you wouldn't mind losing 1-0, but when you lose 2-0, it takes a sting out of it a wee bit, but I'm sure it could be worse. What was the reaction after the game in the dressing room? The girls happy with the performance or disappointed with the result? Um, A bit of both. Like I suppose it, it doesn't matter who you're playing, nobody goes out to come in second best at the end. Like. I, I know we weren't probably the footballing team there, but we still wanted a result out of it. And, you know, a result on the day to us would have been a, a nil-nil draw or a one-one draw, but we didn't get that. So we're going to have to focus now to next weekend. It, it was good. We, we Tommy was happy, the manager. He he was happy with how we played. We had a game plan um, and I think we stuck to it pretty well. So he was happy and we were happy uh, considering, considering the loss, I suppose. I can see is uh, I don't I hate kind of coming across I don't want to come across patronising and um, but we've played against us in pre season played against us last season and and definitely and we've spoke about Athlone and and the likes of Treaty and Bowes this season I think it's going to be a little bit more competitive I can see we spoke a bit with Sirsha as well we can see teams like you really taking points off off the top teams and and really making the league a little bit more competitive but it's it's just great to see I think the standard of the the league starting to get better and better every year and. It's the work that the clubs like Athlone, Treaty, Bowes are putting in behind the scenes that is going to make the league even more competitive. So it's it's going to be a good season for us, I think, going forward. It's it's never nice to lose the first game, but as you say, the performance was there and it's it's something to build on, I think, for us. Yeah, I was impressed uh, watching the game, I have to say. Uh, Fiona Owens, I think you're right back. She impressed me with some of the touches and she's some really nice balls down the, the right-hand side to Caitlin Kyo, who also stood out. She's some cross of a ball... Um, I can only imagine you've been loving to be on the end of some of those because I think just the power that she managed to get from virtually nothing uh, is pretty impressive. How, I suppose, how, how has that gelled? Because obviously you're new in, there's a lot of new faces in that team as well. How have the girls gelled as a, as a unit? Really good. It's it's definitely a really good club to go into. Like, they make you feel so part of it. And from day one, they have they've welcomed you to the club and... Even there, the, you see the chairman of the club, he treats the men and the women the exact same. Like, we train one side of the pitch, the men train the other side, and there's no difference. Like, so that, that, on that side of it, it's really good. And then I think on Saturday, it was, it was a good team performance. Uh, Fiona Owens was very good. And then Leah Brady at the back, she had a tough job. I think she was trying to keep Emily, Emily Whedon at bay. And, like, that, that's no easy job for a fast player like her. So, look at, I think... Yeah, Fiona Owens was good, but 
it was it was a great team performance all around, I think, and even though we didn't get the results. There was one incident of Leah Brady, I think, cleared the ball off the line, uh, and then Abigail running back to save this the rebound from Whelan as well. So uh, I was very I have to say Athlone impressed me the most of all the teams this weekend in terms of maybe what I was expecting going in and the performance they actually delivered. That and Bose, it's it's up there, but but everybody was really, really good. Steph, sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, no, I was just going to touch on something that myself and Breffney were speaking off off air before we came on here about how maybe the Women's National League has benefit, benefited from the likes of the GAA not being back with some players who maybe would have been playing with the GAA sides are now playing with Women's National League sides. You yourself have played GAA over the years and now obviously you're not able to train at the moment, but what are your thoughts going forward? Do you think you're going to try and balance both? We've obviously had Saoirse on today as well who has decided to take a break from GAA. Do you feel that you're going to be able to go through this season with both or do you think it's more about focusing on the football for this year? Um, yeah, the the GA being off has helped our team, I think, I suppose for the likes of the Dublin teams and that who you either choose the Gaelic or the soccer. I think it's more so than in the smaller clubs. You see people trying to balance them both. Um, I think we have a lot of GA players in the Athlone side and that's, I think, where the physicality comes from. Probably not as soccerly skillful, but... We've got strength and we've got the passion and the pride. So I think that helps us in that way. And for me, I think, no, the, the football is going to have to come first this year. I'll maybe try to play a bit of club Gaelic if I can. But no, I think it's trying to break into senior squads for the Ireland team and under 19s coming on next year. Like you have to uh, set goals and focus on one thing really and try try get there. So hopefully that's what it is for me. I know you'll probably break a few Leitrim hearts by hearing you say that uh, for this season, but I know uh, Hugh Donnelly, the Leitrim manager, has probably been on to you through the, the winter. Is that has that cord been cut? Are you, are you not involved with Leitrim this season, or what's the plan? Uh, I wouldn't say I'm not. I, I wouldn't say I'm not involved. I wouldn't say I am involved. It's see where it goes. It mightn't come back at all this year, so we'll have to see what happens. Cross that bridge when you get there, is I. <laughs> very yeah, exactly. You said football as well, this, which can be taken up either way as well. <laughs> I like it. That'll go down well in Manor Hamilton. Of course, defending county champions in Leitrim as well. So uh, plenty of strings to your bow, Mern. In terms of the 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 goals in your own career, I suppose you've touched on a few things there in terms of international squads. Is that the target? Is an Irish cap the 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 attraction and the the main focus at the moment? Definitely a, a senior Irish cap is definitely the main focus. I, I have a long way to go to get there yet. Um, I think when you when you watch the, the senior women play, they're fast, they're technically good. So I think I have a lot to work on yet, but hopefully with the move to Athlone and training now four times a week, that will help bring it on as well. So, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to happen overnight. It's going to take hard work and commitment. So... I'm willing to give that if there's a chance there. So hopefully can maybe someday do like the like Svella Malloy there and break in eventually. So hopefully. Yeah. In terms of the actual move to Athlone, it all happened very quickly at the end of last season. I think you were announced maybe, maybe 24 hours after the end of last season. It was, it was definitely in the first couple of days. When was that agreed? Did you know you were going to Athlone before you finished up with Sligo or had that been kind of spoken about beforehand? How tough was that decision? Ah oh, yeah, look at it. It was obviously tough enough, but it wasn't too bad. Like, you know, I, I knew for myself that I needed to get to a, a senior squad if I wanted to be progressing. So um I went down to Athlone for a few trainings there before the end of the Rover season and just really, really enjoyed it. The people were good, the the atmosphere was really good around the stadium and you know, they're really welcoming and they can't do enough for you. So I think that's what drove me down there. Like it's 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 good commitment. Like it's it's two hours from where I live to at loan. So, you know, it it it's it's hard work as well. Like on parents as well bringing me, but you know that's what it takes if you want to get to the top. So hopefully. Have you not worked out carpooling yet? Sure, isn't there half a dozen from Sligo going down just down the road? Hey, but must... <laughs> oh, of course. Actually, I'm not <laughs> of it. In terms yeah, of <laughs> in terms of the actual uh, the, the familiarity, you talked about the, the openness and the welcoming nature of, of that loan in terms of how they treat people. It must be nice to have so many familiar faces. We touched on with Caleb Brady a couple of weeks ago, but um, w- within that squad, you have the Heinemann sisters, Amy and 
And Catherine, of course, you'd, Catherine was one of your coaches the whole way through the, uh, the Emerging Talent Program in Sligo. And now you've got uh, Roshi Malloy, Aoife Harn are also in that squad. Abigail Ronan played for um, Sligo Rovers, although maybe a bit before your time as well, and, and Kelsey. So there's a lot of familiarity and a kind of shared experiences with a lot of that that squad. Does that make it easier to step in? Oh, definitely. And there's girls there that you, you played like with the Irish 17s with and played with Kayla for the 16s and Emily Corbett there. So look at it. You, you know loads of people in the league and around. So it's great to have friends there that you know you're not worried about who you're going to talk to when you go down. And even the girls that you wouldn't have known before are very welcoming and they, they make you feel very proud of it. So. What's the ambition for the season? Are you going to put a number on it in terms of where you think Athlone are going to finish the the league? Where are you? Where I don't know, the hope, hopefully, there'll be a few surprises along the way, and you know, might be P mentor. You wouldn't know the people <laughs> to draw. You thought those results for elsewhere, right? <laughs> I like it. I like the confidence. <laughs> And she'll be back to tell us all about it when I'm guaranteed you're back on the show if you beat PMAT this season. We'll have you back to talk about it and just rub it down Steph's nose. I won't be on. <laughs> she'll have to Steph, get a replacement for that week if that happens. <laughs> Listen, Mern, as always, it's a pleasure to chat to you. Thanks so much for popping in and telling us all about, I suppose, the first game of what we know will be many uh, across the Women's National League down the line. Thanks very much. Talk to you soon. Thanks, Mern. Best Thank of luck for Myrne Devaney there. It's great to see young talent coming through the league. And I think it's one of the things I'm really excited about watching this season as we see some of those girls coming through those number 17 ranks. Myrne, of course, and no more than myself, a proud Leitrim person. And Leitrim's loss, definitely at loan's gain for this season. I probably did her a little disservice as well. She's uh, not just a physical player. She's very uh, technically able and she's a driving force from that midfield uh, with at loan. She was uh, had some really, really good runs and, and, and efforts from distance over the course of the game on Saturday. Uh, you're very familiar with her as well. Obviously, she's part of that uh, home-based international squad that you've been involved in over the last few months through lockdown, Stephanie. Yeah, I only kind of became really aware of her when we played the games in February. We played the, the home-based game against Shells and then PMA themselves play against the home-based selection as well. So that was kind of my first real look at her. And I think you're right. I think she... She's a hard-working player who, I think she carries the ball really well. I think that could be something that will stand to her in the future because I think we need players that within the international setup. But yeah, I think uh, a really bright prospect and I'm looking forward to seeing how she gets on this season because as you say, it's her, her first season in the Women's National League and I think that can only help her going forward. She reminds me of, of a Sonia Hughes type character from of old who kind of just marshals that midfield and is, is in charge of, of suppose, and just distributes it out and just kind of just a playmaker essentially in a team. And I think she if she has half the career Sonia did at international level, she'll be doing really, really well for herself. Anyway, uh, it is, of course, international week. Yeah, there's a bit of a break coming up with two games, a uh, little trip to Belgium in there as well. You've been named in the extended squad, Steph. Uh, what's the, the situation with the games? Yeah, it's I'm in the provisional uh, squad that was announced, as you mentioned. Uh, we have a home-based session on Wednesday, so I'm hoping to maybe hear whether I'll be in the, the final squad then or not. Um, I'm just looking forward to, to getting back in and training. We had the two games in February, as I mentioned. I've uh, worked extremely hard in, in the off-season, and I felt I've done quite well in those games. So just looking forward to, as I said, meeting up with the girls and, and seeing how the session goes. And look, if it goes the right way, all great. But if it doesn't, just get the head down and go again. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that international break uh, goes in the next two weeks. But before that, we do have one round of fixtures to play this weekend, and that is on Saturday afternoon, Cork City versus Shells at 2 p.m. down in Cork, while Galway will host Bohemians in Eamon DC Park, also at 2 p.m. kickoff. DLR Waves are in the UCD Bowl with Wexford Youths as the visitors, while Treaty make the short-ish journey to Athlone for that 7 p.m. kickoff. All those games on Saturday. Anything pop out at you there, Steph, in terms of uh, ones that you'll be watching on uh, LOI TV at the weekend? Yeah, I think Cork and Shells is probably the one that I think I'll be looking forward to the most. Obviously, uh, DLR had a bye this weekend as well, so their first game in the league, uh, a big test against uh, Wexford. As I said, a big physical team who who will be looking to, to get their first win in the league as well. So, look, a few good games to look forward to and yeah, looking forward to seeing how they go. Disappointed that we're not playing. It's a big gap for us now before before our game against Shells. But yeah, it's it's a good weekend of, of football and in store for everybody to watch. What's it like as a player when you do have a bye week like P might have this week? Is it just like would DLO have been kicking their heels this weekend, kind of going, Well, everyone else is getting to play and we're just sitting here looking? 
Yeah, well, I think almost DLR more so because it's the wait in pre-season and this league start and there's a big hype around the league start and they don't have a game, you know. So for us, at least we got the first game out of the way. It's just, it's nice, as I said, we we got that win in the first game. It's nice to keep the momentum going, but it's going to happen to every team in the league this year, isn't it, with the, with the nine teams. So, yeah, just have to get on with it. We'll be working away and training anyway. And obviously the international games as well, it's it's focused maybe more elsewhere for certain players. But yeah, it's good to just get the break in and, and as I said, prepare for the next game, which is Shells. It's a big one for us. Absolutely. Well, listen, we'll leave it there for the week. Thank you very much to Saoirse Noonan and Marin Devani for joining us, to Stephanie Roach, as always, and I've been Brett Nearly. Thank you so much for watching us here on Women's National League podcast here on finalwhistle.a. We'll be back with you next week. Talk to you then.